Why do I have the spinning pinwheel of death on my Chrome browser? Oh, there we go. Okay. Periscope's online, Facebook's online, YouTube's online. We're all good to go. Everybody's online. What's up, Aaron? More. What's up, everybody? We're starting a couple minutes, just getting that and everything uh, propagate. And uh, we'll start in a second. Tonight's show is for newbies, geocaching terms and phrases. So uh, it's going to be an interesting show. we got a lot to get through tonight. A lot of emails, a lot of information. It's going to be fun. Anybody from Florida, give us a call. I got a, I got a question from somebody from Sweden about Florida. I need somebody who's a Floridian. So if you're a Floridian, give us a call tonight. We need to talk to you, please. Yes, it's warm in the winter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is warm in the winter. Yes, it is. Good evening, Glenn. Okay. <clears throat> Ian's only saying the buzz is strong tonight, Jesse. Turn your sound up until you absolutely need it. Yeah. Who are you talking to? Ian says your uh, buzz is strong tonight. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Ian. No more buzz. <laughs> Should only pop in when needed. If you know what I mean. But you can still hear me. We're online all the place. Take it that new board. No, that new board has not come in. I haven't ordered it yet. I'm still researching it. Uh, the best one to get. So, yeah. <laughs> Aaron, Cody, and I got a Portillo's milkshake. Oh, Aaron, look at you with the milkshake. There you go, buddy. Borg. Nice job. Oh, Chad's not to my virtual left. Chad. <laughs> all um, right, I'll fix that. Hold on. There we go. Now he's to my virtual left. There we go. Just for you, Thomas. It's all fixed. Thank you, sir. We got a lot of stuff to get through tonight, man. It's gonna be a long show. For what it's worth, I GSM times two. You don't hear the buzz because she because she uh, she muted her mic. That's why you don't hear the buzz. If she talks, she'll hear the buzz. I gotta get. I gotta fix it. Jesse, see if you can. Jesse, do you have your headphones on? Yes, you do. Uh, do me a favor and see if you can move all the cords away from that thing. Maybe it'll. Uh... Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you got two minutes, Jess. We'll give you two. <sighs> again, I'm going to say it again. Anybody from Florida, give us a call. 808 468 7924. Anybody from Florida? I need a I have a I need a Florida question answered. If you live in Florida or have lived in Florida or have lived in Florida, give us a call. 808-468-7924. Jesse, close up of the nose. Really nice. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't get a call, I can I can address yeah. most of it. I've been there plenty of times. To Florida. Well, I've been to Florida a lot, but I've never I've only cashed in Florida once. So I, uh, a, a lot of the vegetation and poisonous items are the same uh, in Florida and where I lived on the Gulf Coast of uh, in Texas. In Texas, so mm -hmm. about the right, only Jeff, thing. That... No, it's still the same. I know that's just I, it's about all I can do right now without like taking my whole setup apart. Right. So sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Jesse, throw your stuff on mute there. Uh, all right, Chad, you ready to go? Uh, sure am. I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Let's start this bad boy. All right, I am uh, recording the audio. Good to go. All right, here we go, Chad. You ready? Nope, there's yep. the alarm. Look at that. Here we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> you 
want to know how to find it. Seek it out when they hide it. You know it's in the bag when it's an easy grab. But come on, take a chance now. So go, 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 geocache, geocache. And if you need help, we're right there in a flash. If you got a question, just call in and ask. I cover the stash. All the geocaching podcast. The geocaching podcast. Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday. It is 8.30, which means that it is once again time for the Geocaching Podcast. My name is Scott Burks. We have short and it's manning the phones tonight. And please welcome to my virtual left, my co-host, Jazz427. Howdy, y'all. Are you ready to talk geocaching terms and phrases? That's right, Chad. Tonight's episode number 601, recorded live on February 12th, 2020, is geocaching terms and phrases. For the newbies, Chad. It's for the newbies. Mm-hmm. Phone lines are open to give us a call. 808-468-7924. That is 808-GOT-SWAG. Hey, Chad. Uh-huh. So uh, every week we talk about this. Every week. Patreon, Chad. Costs a lot of money to make this show work. Uh, we really could use your guys' help. We appreciate all our patrons. So much stuff on the over, on the other side of the paywall. The inner circle. Extra audio. Extra video. Available to all you guys. Chad, we got a new patron this week. We got Molly uh-huh. Malone 8 out of awesome. Sweden, Chad. Isn't that a, uh, a a song? Is it? I don't know. Is it? Yeah, about the Dubliners. I have, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> so we appreciate her. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Inner Circle. Molly. We appreciate it very much. Anybody else, please give anything you can. Uh, tier starting as low as three dollars. We'd really appreciate it. We can really use your help. Um, you can you can do that via our Patreon. It's patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash the geocaching podcast. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Tonight's show is brought to you by Cashly. Cashly is an advanced geocaching app for iOS that features powerful online and offline features, including filtered searches. Offline maps and offline saving and caches. Cashly has hundreds of advanced features that will make your geocaching experience just that much better. Get more info at cashly.com. That's C A C H L Y.com. And tonight it's also sponsored by Logwork. Logwork are the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper. It's a logbook designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hide who would rather go cash than do cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. That's L O G W E R K.com. It's also brought to you by FTF Geocacher Magazine. FTF Geocacher is the magazine for geocachers written by geocachers with six issues a year. FTF offers practical advice, hints and tips, cacher bios and milestones, geocaching events, trail tales, and all things geo-related. Find them at ftfgeocacher.com. So, Chad, not, Mm -hmm. not not to halt this whole thing, but coming to a halt, but so Jesse just got her, her, uh, FTF with, with, uh, Joshua on the cover, and I'm like, "Hey, that came out weeks ago," and she's like, "No, no, it just came out." Chad, didn't really? you get it like weeks ago? Yeah, I got mine like three, three weeks ago, I think. Yeah, see, Jess, I just got it. Like now, you're low. <laughs> I, I I can't win. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I Call just up. got it like two or three days ago. Yeah. So. She'll, she'll I know there me. were some delays in production this month. We can't hear. You. Uh, the postman postman probably pulled it out and was reading it and, and right, finally, yeah, finally slipped it back in. Right, that's what happened. My the corner is a little messed up, so I wouldn't be surprised. He took it home. The dog ate it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and by practical geocaching, practical geocaching sells utility items for geocaching. That's the that's yours. That's not mine. And by the Max Huds Body Company. I was wondering. I'm like, I've never read that before. <laughs> Max Huds Body Company makes handmade bath and body products from all natural oils and butters. Items such as poison be gone soap, itch spray, and two cent choices of bug spray are all great for outdoor enthusiasts like geocachers. At Max Huds Body, we have you covered from head to toe. Find them at maxhudsbody.com. That's M A C S U D S B O D Y dot com. And by Practical Geocaching. Practical Geocaching sells utility items for geocaching. Our items are made in the USA, and we always provide free shipping. Find them at practicalgeocaching.com. That's P-R-A-C-T-I-C-A-L, geocaching.com. See, Jesse, uh, Kara Killer says the issue was on his coffee table when we were there. I think that's why I was confused that I hadn't received it yet. Yes. And here, like, uh, 
GSM Times 2 says, I just got mine, but a friend in Vermont got it a month ago. Yeah. There were hey, there were some issues this month. Now you sound okay. Okay. Yeah, she's still a little staticky. Well, you know, staticky, yeah, but at least you could hear her. Okay, thank you, Jess. Uh, and finally, by pathtags.com. Well, for all your swag and path tag needs, visit our website to get creative help to trade or log tags or to purchase your own personalized path tags. With over 39,000 tags to collect, pathtags.com is everything you need to start your path tag obsession. Visit them at pathtags.com. P A T H T A G S dot com. Chad, so did you see what's going on with pathtags.com because of the whole coronavirus? They like halted oh. production of all the uh, path tags, supposedly. I think they're back in business now, but they were down for a little bit, I think. Yeah, pretty much uh, all the factories shut down for at least a week and a half. Yeah. Uh, some some two weeks. So Jesse's been bugging me. I got to create uh, her new one, her new path tag for 2020. She's been bugging me to get on that, so I got to do that. Uh, anyway, uh, you can find the links to all our sponsors on our website or in our show notes. Chad. Mm-hmm. For the newbies this week, geocaching terms and phrases, Chad. Awesome. But before we get to that, Chad, we've got uh, more. We got some news here. We got news. So let's. The news. The news. The news. The news. I haven't heard that one in a while, huh? What do you think of that? <laughs> uh, just to reiterate, uh, the same thing we've been doing uh, all this month: practical geocaching. Our sponsors is once again stepping up to offer small prizes to anyone who calls in and adds to the newbie conversation all month long. Simply call in and win. We have 20 prizes to give away, the mini pocket repair kits, which are fantastic, I might add. And uh, we are giving them away all this month. All you got to do, guys, give us a call. You win a prize. Give your address to Jesse. Uh, limit one prize per caller during the month of February, which is up to 20 callers, Chad. So we got plenty mm, awesome. more to give away. Uh, so Jesse had something in in uh, in the news that she noticed. I didn't even pick up on this. Shall let's see if you did. Geocaching public profiles. Chad got an update this past week. Did you notice? I did not notice. Yeah, how about that? The now show finds, hides, and instead of, do you know what it showed? It showed you your finds, your hides, and your what, Chad? Do you know? Not not a clue. Jesse, what did it show? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. So <laughs> this is the, the public profile. So like if I want to look at, you know, some random cashers profile on that page, not your own profile, it would show the, the person's name and their picture. And then it would show finds, hides, and it used to be total trackables moved or logged. Your trackables. Your trackables is what it used now, to be. Yeah. Now, Chad, it shows your finds, your hides. And your favorite points. The favorite points that, that have been given to you? Mm-hmm. Or is it given to you or yes. is it you have to give out? That that your hides have earned. Really? This is the total number of favorite points awarded to all that user's hides. That's right. I didn't even notice that. Huh. I don't know hmm. if I like that. How many do I have? Well, what's mine say? I don't know what mine says. I don't know. I don't think I get too many. Although the house certainly helps. The house one certainly helps, but I don't think I have too many. I've only got 103 favorite points. How many? 103. Out of how many hides you got there, Chad? Uh, 37 hides, oh, but, good, but a, a large number of those hides are, are events. So. Oh. Or a fair, fair number. Scott has 234 favorite points. You're out of town. Do I really? Mm-hmm. Look at me. How many hides? Oh, I got like 150 or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> but only like literally 20 of them are still active. I don't have that many active hides. Yeah. I, I have 131. I think it's kind of a nice feature, you know, what? your collective favorite points all in one location. So people could see how good of a hider you are. So basically, it's hide shaming you. Yes. <laughs> That's what it's basically doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're allowed to. So, so what, you know, it tells you how lousy of a hider you are. Anyway, look at, look at, look at Demshire with 540. Character's got 540. Uh, anyway, awesome. Uh, Chad, we got some emails, buddy. I mm. got mail. Yay! I got mail. Yay! Yay! So, Chad, before we get into this show, we've got some a uh, couple of emails to uh, go through here. So, uh, good friend Barry, Master Sergeant USMC, sends us an email. Chad, in one of your recent shows, I heard you talking about the partnership attribute listed on certain geocaches. We did this a couple weeks ago. A couple years ago, I did some research to find out what what they are and how I can find a geocache to earn that attribute. 
that's one of the two attributes I have yet to get. I only have two left and I'm done with the attributes. That being one of them, Chad, I think you're in the same boat. Jesse, nope. I think you're in the same boat as well. So let's start with what the GC says about this attribute. And it's the attribute guys with the shaking hands. That's what it is. It's like, it's like this one. The sponsor cache attribute is awarded to geocaches developed in partnership between Groundspeak and another company. Groundspeak works to provide a limited number of entertaining sponsored caches in order to bring another element of fun to the activity. Many geocachers have enjoyed sponsored cache programs from the old Project Ape series to the new and family-friendly PBS Dinosaur Training Geocaching Series. Oh, geo PBS Dinosaur Train Geocaching Series, excuse me. Uh, by the grace of the geocaching gods, this is Barry, there is a cache in Minnesota, where he's from, with that partnership attribute that is still up and running. It is GC2, K as in Ken, B as in Bob, D as in Doug, 1. Sydney's Dinosaur Train T-Rex Eggs. Uh, hang on a second. Go ahead. It's saying that the old Project Ape series should have had this attribute on it. Then why why in the hell don't don't I I have this? Because I, I, think, I've got, I think that 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 Project Ape came out before it is my guess. Well, he's saying that he's saying that the that the series had it, or, or it, this is this is so he's this is many Neo Geocaches have enjoyed sponsored cash programs such as the Ape. That doesn't mean it got the icon. Okay, well they shouldn't have, in my opinion, included it in there uh, if it wasn't actually one that had it anyways so he said um so that i ran a pq recently and to my knowledge there's only one other in the u.s it is in the seattle area and tied to an adventure lab at the museum of flight which is gc5 g as in george t as in tom six j as in jim uh i'm sure it will be a popular cache to get in august when we are there uh you guys are doing great congrats on a 600 milestone hopefully i will see you in wisconsin as soon as i head for that cacti cache as well that one we were talking about the other day. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, a couple weeks ago. That cactus cash. Um, so yeah, so apparently that that one is only four ones. Although I got GSN times two. Oh no, now he's saying he's saying he's you got a bunch of them, but then he's saying no, that's for teamwork. Yeah, this is not teamwork, guys. Right. I, I was big on the last show. I was I was confusing the teamwork with the partnership as, right. as well. And it looks like you know, looking at my profile, I actually had 55 of the teamwork ones already. Uh, in the the multi that I was talking about. Is, is a teamwork and not a not a uh, partnership. I don't know. Ian says there's but, a dinosaur uh, train one in New York too. I think. Yeah, but that one might not, not might not have this icon. I don't think it's guaranteed to have that icon. So I don't know. But I'm noting this one here, and we'll be getting it in August. <laughs> I told Jesse, I'm like, find out where it is. Uh, she says it's. It, he says it's part of the Adventure Lab at the Museum of Flight. Is where it is. Um, you guys do grab them. Okay, so that so that's from Master Sergeant USMC. Barry, thank you so much. Jess, do you have a comment? Yeah, I'm going to throw a link in the chat room to one that I just found. It is one of the dinosaur train ones. Let me see where this one is. Is it in New York? No, it's actually, this one is in Tennessee. Tennessee? No. Yes. Really? Yep. How so did that here. one skirt Barry? I don't know. Oh, no. FF Skippy says you are correct in Central Park. Maybe these did. Maybe these weren't out yet when he did this, when he ran this PQ. Hmm. I don't know. Well, Tennessee's closer than no, no, not really. It's not really that closer to Minnesota. We might be going through Tennessee and spring break. We'll have to see. Oh, going to Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, Chad from Acme Wildcashers. <laughs> Another email. Our friend Acme uh, out in Wisconsin. He says, "Allow me to provide a different perspective on the proper size of a preform." Chad, remember last week we were saying yep. that to us a preform is a small. He apparently disagrees with us. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's going to let us know. Uh, as a parent who sometimes caches with young kids that are still very much into swag, I do my best to go for at least a cache or two that are big enough to hold more than a log whenever they, they are with me. Naturally, I filter out micro and other sizes, but I keep smalls included in my searches. Why? Because the guidelines specifically say a small container, quote, can hold a small logbook and trade items, unquote. When is the last time you saw actual trade items in a preform? I have seen trade items in a pre. Uh, I have as well, and I've yes, I've, I I've put I've put them in them as well. I say I've put tra I've put trade items in a pre form. Yes. Uh, for the record, I think a uh, a path tag will fit in a pre form. For the record. Well, a the traditional ones with the with the square like uh, uh, ID tag ones will not fit in there, but the the ones like the uh, Geico 
uh, one that the uh, the Geico Lizard uh, ones would. Right, right. No, I said a, I said a uh, path tag. Oh yeah, yeah, path tags will fit in. There. Yeah, as I said, a path tag. I didn't see that. My bad. Java bug. <laughs> Java bug. Yeah, it's tough. You can get him in there, but my yeah. brain wasn't wasn't uh, <laughs> yeah path fully tags, on. Path tags definitely fit. Um, okay. Need more evidence? He's he he continues. Need more evidence? The guidelines also say, quote, small containers are one hundred milliliters to one liter, unquote. Now I know most of us Americans don't really understand the good old metric system, so let's translate the terms we might be more familiar with. That 100 milliliters to one liter range is roughly 3.3 to 34 fluid ounces. Based on a quick Google search, the interior volume of a typical preform ranges from just under an ounce to about an ounce and a half. In other words, not a small, is what he's saying. I'm sending this email uh, all in good fun, but I do hope you'll consider this perspective in the future. I, I totally value your opinion yeah. and I don't judge in any way. It's more than an ounce to an ounce and a half. I... <laughs> to me, it's a small. It's a it's a large. It's a larger container than I consider a. I consider a micro to be a nano. I consider a a uh, a pill bottle. I consider a uh, film canister, and I consider what's the other one? Just the one with the, with the with the top with the screw. That's oh, you always lose the uh, nano not bison. The nano. Bison, thank you. I can come up with that name. Those are a, those are a micro to me. Chad, anything else you consider a micro compared to a small? Oh, I've had bisons that are that are, are, uh, that are small. The, the, the typical bison. The typical come bison. You're you could say about. like the whole oh, yeah, the, the sixty ounce you know pill bottle my grandma gets are like this big. You know, like yeah, that's not a, yeah. But I'm talking about the average everyday pill bottle. True. I'll find under an LPC. <laughs> that's a micro. Uh, so he says, sending us some good fun, but, uh, all right. Thank you. Acme wall cashers. Appreciate it. Uh, Chad. Yes, sir. We got one more from Molly, uh, Malone 88 again from Sweden guys. Any from Florida, help me out here. Uh, I found your podcast recently and have enjoyed listening to a few past episodes and would love to join you live, but 3 a.m. is a tad late since I start work at 7 a.m. She's, you know, other side of the world. Uh, next week, there's a few of us meeting up for a week's caching in Florida. I can tell you we need the sunshine. I live in Sweden, and the others hail from Ireland. I'd like some advice about poisonous plants and venomous creatures. I heard some mentioned poison ivy, poison log, and did I hear it right, poison parsnips with yellow flowers. I'm not sure that's in Florida. Is that in Florida, parsnip? Then there's the snakes and others to look out for. We'll be located oh. just south of... What, the uh, parsnips? Yeah, I've never heard... Chad, you... you... No, neither have I. Wait, hold on. Let me fin let me finish this. Uh, we'll be just south of Orlando. Have you recommendations for lotions and potions we should have in the first aid kit? Okay, Chad, are you there? Or are you, okay, uh, breaking up on me. Uh, uh, there you. Go. Okay. Hi, hi. So first of all, yeah, poison ivy is definitely there, but this time of year, it's all going to be. Down with these okay, and when it's when it's you told you told me Chad 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 you totally hmm. broke up start again I'm sorry and it's going to play. go uh, poison ivy is while it's there it's pretty <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Chad it's you're time you're not Dad Chad we heard none of it. I think he's saying it's dormant or something this time of year, right? We heard none of it, dude. Go out and come back in. Yes, I'm going to go reboot my router. <laughs> we heard yeah, every remote. time he starts like to the point, it's like, Bleh. yeah. Thank you, Chad. Uh, I think he said it's dormant. I'm not sure. I, I think, think that's what he's um, saying. Obviously, Florida has got snakes and it's got alligators for Christ's sake. It's got that. Oh, uh, Jim Finch. Jim Finch, what? You live in Florida? You're not calling me? I ask people to call from Florida. Thanks, Jim Finch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're waiting for Chad. We're waiting for Chad. Uh, but I, I think it does have, uh, I think it does have, uh, uh, alligators, right? And it's got some poison snakes. God bless you, Jesse Brown. Sorry about that. I had to mute myself for the sneeze. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, when we went, we were in Florida a few years ago, and we went, we went caching out in the woods. We took the kids out with us, and we really didn't have any problems. I mean, I, I guess it depends on where you're going, and you know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you want to have a first aid kit with you, but uh, in terms of, uh, like, what I said is, um, if you hadn't already, uh, get us um Episode 553 uh, from March of 2019, our Geocaching Hazards, Poisonous and Dangerous show. You can hear all about the different kind of stuff that we have. Uh, Jess, someone's calling it. And uh, Max Sud's Body has fantastic soaps and creams for itchy and poisonous plants. Our sponsor. Uh, so if you do get it or you want oh, to avoid funny. it, you can come into a Max Sud's Body. Uh, go to their website. Fantastic soap, fantastic creams. All that good stuff, man. Can't go wrong with it. What's Scott, wrong you can... That, that's... Uh... Florida caller, so if you want to go ahead and pull that in. call in. I'm going to pull it in right now. Hello, Florida caller, hello. Hey, this is Jim. I got a call out, so I had to call in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, are, you, are you Jimbalaya? Is that who you are? I am Jim. Yes, I am Jimbalaya. Okay, see? Look at that. The call in. And yes, yes, we. I led a group of about 12 other cashers this past weekend going after a multi-cache called the ghost orchid and a couple of them did uh, come down with poison ivy traipsing through the swamp okay so molly malone 88 is, is coming to just south of orlando what should she be worried uh, what should she be worried about what should she be prepared for uh what kind of you know animals uh and or reptile reptiles or plants should she be looking out for well um, unless she's going really out in the uh in the bush out in the swamp i mean she, any, it's basically like anywhere else you would go. I mean, we have pig, pygmy rattlers are probably the, the nasty snakes. They're small, but those are probably the one snakes. I'm not really that concerned about alligators per se. I mean, I see them all the time, but more often than not, uh, they leave you alone if you leave them alone. What about snakes? Um, so it's pretty much much snakes are probably would be my main concern. And yes, the way Florida is, poison ivy is kind of out there all the time but it is probably worse in the summertime but even with our kind of mild winters we get you can uh, you can get it this time of year as well really okay. oh yeah so, so can you get it all year round then is that what it's say you can get it all year round? pretty pretty much pretty much <laughs> yep we had oh. a couple we had a couple cashers just this past weekend uh, we were in uh the swamps down the fakahatchee strand down in south florida and uh uh, I got reported back that a couple of them got uh, poison ivy from going around okay. uh, hiking this past weekend. What about Justin? Like, what about like if she's just going to parks and stuff? What about that kind of stuff? What she need? Like... Uh, probably not so much if you're just going into parks, like uh, more in urban areas. You probably probably don't have to worry about it quite as much. Okay. And you guys don't have you guys don't have wild parsnip out there, do you? I have not heard of any wild parsnip around here. No. Okay. All right. Good to know. But there is snakes and stuff like that. All that stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, right. I mean, but snakes, the usual stuff that will kill all you. sorts of snakes and gators and all sorts of stuff down here. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, do you have any recommendations? For, any recommendations for what you should have in a first aid kit or anything? Um, anything special for uh, you know for a Florida native or anything that uh, you don't usually um, have? Depends on if, if they're if they're allergic to bee stings. Uh, they they could run into like a, a bee's nest, whether it's uh, yellow jackets or or your basic honeybees. Um, other than that, just your typical things you might have in a first aid kit to deal with scra scrapes and scratches. We got thorny vines and the palmetto can be kind of pointy and scratchy up too. So mm -hmm. um, probably good to wear wear long pants if you think you're going to go out uh, traipsing around much <laughs> in the vegetation. But uh, for the most part, any anything basic you would have would probably work if you're if you're used to geocaching out in the woods. Okay, and then what? What is the typical st uh, style hide in Florida? I can't. I was there three years ago. I can't remember what the typical. Jesse, do you remember the hide the hide styles in Florida? Well, What's... if you see if you see uh, something that says hidden Florida style, that means it's hidden in what's called a boot of a palm tree. Palm trees have these kind of like little uh, growths where the palms get cut back as it as it grows higher, and they're they're great for like little tucking in like tree forms or. Uh, or small containers like in the tree itself that can be uh, three to, I mean, from, from the ground level up to like six feet high, depending on how big the tree is. Okay. That's considered a Florida, hiding Florida style. So would you need a, uh, a, a ladder for that or some kind of? 
No, I mean there are there are tree ones that are hidden up in trees, but not not for if it just says Florida style. No, it's just the like you're looking on the tree rather than down on the ground. It's like hidden hidden in the tree itself. Okay, all right. Uh, hold on, we got Chad joining us. Chad, hello, sir. Hello, hello. <laughs> Why are you calling? Hello. You know, you could be on the show, Chad. You're a host. Yeah, well, the uh, my <laughs> modem hasn't come back up yet. <laughs> Oh, God bless live, man. Live is the best. Uh, Jim, anything else you can recommend? First of all, I appreciate it so much for calling it. Anything else you can recommend? Nope, nope. Uh, now is the perfect time in Florida. It's not too hot. So now is the time to uh, that we like to get outside and go for long hikes and stuff because the weather's perfect this time of year down here. Yeah, we're coming next month. We'll be there. Awesome. Bringing the kids, awesome. uh, bringing the kids off to, uh, where are we going? Boca? Where we're going, Jess, right? Yeah, we're going. You're on the other side of the state, right? Aren't you on the? Uh, you're on. The, you're on the. Uh, yeah, I'm on the. I'm on West Coast. On the You'll west. be on the East Coast. Yeah, we'll be Florida. on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Jim, thank you so much for calling in. I'm sure you helped her greatly. All Appreciate right. It. All, All right. right. Good talking to you. To you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Oh, see, that's what we needed. We needed our, our listeners to come through, a, a true Floridian to come through. Chad, <laughs> what's going? What's going on, Chad? I don't know. <laughs> modems aren't coming back up. The modems. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what all Jim said, but I've never heard of poison parsnips in Florida. Oh, he said there's not. And, no, he said no. And, Just and you're on poison me, ivy is is mostly going to be dormant, but they're still like the uh, if the ivy's like been uh, climbing up trees and stuff, it still might have some of the oils on there, so it's still possible to get it. I would, you know, I wouldn't necessarily bring anything with me, but I would be prepared to go to the drugstore and pick up some poison ivy scrub but that wipe it. yeah the wipe yeah oh, the, there's wipes and there's scrub there's you know there's there's different things to sure. to take that'll get rid of the oils all right. all right well there you go uh hope you hope we helped you out there uh molly malone we appreciate uh your email and thank you for becoming a, a patron and uh enjoy florida it's a wonderful state we uh We'll be there next month. We enjoy going there. It's a great, it's great to save the cash in. Uh, all right, Chad, let's move along to the show. Geocaching terms and phrases, Chad, for the newbies. You know, we love, uh, what's he saying? I think Scott Burks is sabotaging his co-host equipment to steal the whole show. Wait, wait, he's coming back. Ah, so much you know, GSN times too. He's back. There he is. Back oh. on the air. <laughs> what? I said back on the air. There you go. But now you're not to my virtual left anymore. That's the problem. Uh-oh. Uh Okay. Um, oh, there he is. Thank you. Uh, so Chad, let's talk about uh, the newbie the newbies, uh, with your catching term and phrases. You know, we forget what it's like to be a newbie. And by the way, anybody who wants to call in and add to this list, uh, it and when oh my god, 808 468 7924. You call in, you win a prize. Jesse, I'm assuming you didn't get uh, Jim's information, did you? No, because I pulled him in. Jim, give us a call back. Jim Belay, give us a call back. Talk to Jesse and give her your address. You don't have to come back on the air. Just call and Jesse will answer the phone and get your address. Um, so, so Chip, sometimes we, when I'm out there, I feel like a newbie again. When you're out where? Caching. Why is that? If I if I can't find a cache and it's about ready to smack me in the face, sometimes yeah, I feel like a noob. Yeah. So uh, we've all been there, you know. We've all started with like, what is you know, what does ALR mean? You know, like we never, none of us knew. So let's go through some of these terms that we use, terms and phrases. So the newbies who listen to this show will be like, that's what that means. Uh, this is going to be somewhat alphabetical. So um, we should make it easier for everybody else. Uh, Chad, 1-1 one, one uh-huh. or difficulty slash terrain. The first number indicates how hard a cache is. And the second, how challenging the terrain on the way to it is. One is the easiest. Five is the hardest. The numbers can be given in 0.5 segments. Yep. <laughs> That's all, gotcha. all right, Jack. Go not much, next. not much more to say <laughs> on that. But I want to make sure everybody understands this. I want to make this simple, stupid. So this is what we talked about last week. The the DT ratings. This is what this is doing. This is what okay. we're talking about. The DT rating, which is what we talked about last week. So, so the ac- the acronym ALR means additional logging requirements. Yes. So some some caches demand extra tasks to be completed in order to be logged. For example, it could be taking a photo of a location. However, caches with such additional requirements are normally no longer accepted. That's right. ALR is a very uh, older caching term. Uh, usually, there's no longer ALRs allowed on caches anymore. 
it, it, it's only grandfathered in caches. Right. Uh, back in the day, uh, before they changed everything, uh, you could have like you must take a picture, you know, you must email me or must attach a picture to your log. Uh, they can't make you do that anymore. That's not allowed anymore. You can't do that. Um, but that's what an ALR. Is. So if you ever hear people talking about, oh yeah, it has an ALR. Now you know it. additional log requirement. And for the record, not allowed. Uh, archive or archived, closing the cache for good, removing it from the searches and from the map on geocaching.com. Normally done when a cache is broken or has disappeared and the owner doesn't want to replace it. See also temporary disabled, which we'll get to. Uh, Chad? Attributes, icons showing shown on the geocaching page that represent various qualities of that cache such as hiking distances, wheelchair accessibility, and if there are public restrooms nearby. So you get a lot of, a lot of extra information in there, such as uh, there's sometimes a, a picture of a house of a fence indicating that it might be on someone's property. So you, you would, so you shouldn't be afraid to necessarily go up if it's got that icon onto someone's property, if it's got the icon on there. But uh, but if it doesn't have that icon, I would avoid going onto someone's personal property. Absolutely, yes. Pay attention to the attributes. And um, we just did a whole show about attributes. Uh, was it last week or two weeks ago? When did we do that? Uh, no, it was two weeks ago. We did two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got Ian giving me a hard time in the um, in the uh, in the chat room. Shockingly, he's not calling me. I thought for sure. Uh, ALRs are allowed on challenges, virtuals, and earth caches. Correct. Yes. Well, are they? Is it actually? Uh, they're not allowed on virtuals anymore. Um, well, it, well, isn't the picture? No, you don't have to add it to your. You don't have to add the pictures now. Answers to Earth caches are part of, of the Earth cache. Yeah, part of the Earth cache. So is that? Technically and, and, and 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 qualifying on the challenges, I, I wouldn't call that uh, for the challenges and Earth caches. And virtual, since they have to have answers to them, that's that's your proof that you've been there, as opposed to the other additional logging requirements, which are things that aren't generally associated with it, such yeah. as photos. I agree. I agree. See, you're wrong. Uh, bookmark, Chad. A feature mm -hmm. available to premium members only. It adds caches to a list that you can call upon. I didn't through, know about through the website. I, through the thank you, Jesse. Through the website, thank you. What's that I didn't you? realize that that was a premium member only. I've been oh, premium you? member for so long. Oh, see, see. Uh, speak of the devil. Here we go. I'll bring him right in. <laughs> Hello, Ian. How are you, sir? <laughs> Hello. Plead your case. Go ahead. I'll give you All two right. minutes to plead your case. <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> ALRs. Um, there's a specific additional logging requirement that was allowed on earth caches. They just made the change recently to reallow photos to be required on earth caches. Really? Um, really? When did they do that? The, when they brought back the virtual rewards in 2017. Uh, hmm. People said, hey, you can do a picture. You can require a picture on a virtual. Why can't I require it on my earth cache? Um, so... <clears throat> The, the change to that, though, is it can be um, a picture. You can require a picture of yourself or a personal item. You have to add the or personal item thing. So I can take a picture of my hat to prove it to me because uh -huh. some people don't want their picture in there. Sure. So okay. <clears throat> so that's that's the change. Um, and you're only allowed to do that on virtuals and earth caches. Um, and Chad, not to be nitpicky, but I, I consider meeting a challenge requirement and additional logging requirement. Otherwise, I could just log it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just being nitpicky, you know. No, I love you guys. Thank but. you, Ian, for that. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Always good to hear from you. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll capitulate. <laughs> All right, Chad. Uh, let me just go to the next one. Bookmark list. So we've got bookmark and bookmark list. A bookmark list is a list of caches under a specific headline or topic. For example, my favorite caches. That's a bookmark list. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Chad. What's the next one? B O Y P or B Y O. <laughs> not bring your own beer. Uh, B Y O P. Bring your own pen. Yes. An abbreviation letting visitors know that the cache doesn't include a pen. 
you know, if it's a micro, you should realize that it's not going to have a pin in there, by the way. Yes. And uh, for the record, you should actually always put a pencil in the cache, not a pen. Especially if you live someplace like Chicago. Pens freeze, pencils don't freeze. So, p- p- Pens are better in, in Houston than, than yeah. uh, pencils. A little cold weather fun fact <laughs> for all you cashers in the cold weather. Yes. But uh, if you're a cashier, you need to be bringing in a pen with you always. Yeah, you should have a pen on you all the time. I got a pen. Many, many pens in my car. So does Jesse. Uh, many pens in my bag. Yes. And I have, and Jesse has probably lost probably a couple hundred pens over her caching career. Yes, that's <laughs> true. That's why when we're together, I give the pen to Scott. That's right, because if I she has it, it will eventually get lost. Uh, um, I, I do the uh, give a pen, take a pen process. <laughs> uh, uh, next up, cash, Chad. Cash, mm-hmm. a short version, a shorter version of the word geocache. All yeah. right, that's what cash means. Cash bomb, a large number of caches placed at the same time in a relatively small area. When the caches are published, you can uh, see an explosion on the map. Yes, usually you see those around uh, like a, a big event or even a uh, a mega or like when, we, like for example, we always have yearly events here in Chicago. And whenever a couple days before the yearly event, kaboom. Yep. Wow. Uh, cacher, I get the short ones. A cacher. A person involved in geocaching. Cache page, the web page of a specific cache. This is where you, the information, such as the coordinates, hints, previous logs of the cache, and other information is found. Yeah, the cache page, the good old cache page. Although, you know, everybody, do, 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 the, do the newbies even go to the cache page anymore? I think they probably go to the cache page more frequently than I do. Really? I mean, like, how many people still go to the website and actually, like, look at the Well, page? you can still go to the cache page through the app. So Yeah, but that's not really a cache page. That's just an app. Uh, but it's got all the information in there. It's got the description. It's got pictures, etc. Yeah. Just sometimes, too. Yeah, look for where the previous finder dropped his pen. Totally. Do you know how many pens I've found to caches? Yeah, I see that stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, Where are we here? Uh, Cedo, cash in or Cito, if you will. Cash in, trash out, an initiative that involves geocachers picking up trash while caching, keeping nature and the earth clean. Cedo can be performed on your own while geocaching or as an event where several geocachers go together to do a community service. CO. Oh, it oh, can oh. also be done while not geocaching. Yeah, is that, yeah. Is that considered Cedoing? Absolutely. Yes. I actually, Absolutely. I actually saw that term used. Um, I was at a, really, yeah, I was at a like a roadside museum-y kind of a thing. I can't remember exactly what it was, but there were no caches there, and, and it was not caching related at all. And outside of the building was um, like a a milk jug or something that had a whole bunch of grocery sacks in it, and a sign on it that said "Cedo, please take one." Really? Yep. Yeah, but what about the whole cash in part? That's really uh... well. I think it's you know it's just become a, a term to mean clean up in just yeah. in general a generic you know clean as you go kind of a term. So clean in, trash out kind of. Uh, it's 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 the activity of doing the cash in, trash out, while an event is a specific event around sea towing. Okay, so sea towing is a is a verb. Sure. What you're saying, not a noun. It could be a noun or a verb. Okay, it could be either. Yeah. Right. I consider it. I, I carry in trash up. Oh yeah. yeah there you go. I consider it always to be a noun. You're saying it's also a verb. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Chad, so you're C- up. CEO, cash owner. That's a big one. The CEO. You always hear that term a lot. Like, yeah. oh, the CEO said that, and right. You don't know. That's just the cash owner guy. That uh, CEO is a jerk. <laughs> I've CEO, been that CEO, CEO deleted my log. That CEO does not know how to take courts. <laughs> uh, FDF, the first to find, written to indicate that a person was the first to find a cache which is considered prestigious. Don't be, don't confuse that with the FTL, the first to log. That's always the uh, you, know, <laughs> you found it first, but I logged it first, so never mind. All right, Chad, continue. Geocoin, specially designed coins with the goal to move from cash to cash. The coins have unique codes printed on them, allowing cashers to register and track them online. 
And if you get a geo coin that you want that you don't want to get uh, lost or taken, don't put it in the cash. That's right. Sorry. Look at look at Honorable Dirty starting. Cedo can be used in many parts of speech. <laughs> We're confusing him, I think. Um, yeah, the geo coin. Um, you know the funny thing about a geo coin. Uh, I have many on my wall right in front of me. Um, is that yeah, like you say, like if you don't want it. I, I, I will never understand the whole, I'm going to take this and keep it. I'm going to steal this coin because it's super cool. Right. I never understood the point of that. Um, you know, it's not your, it's stealing. More or less. It's, yeah, it's, it is. Uh, more or less. Um, and I never, like, this person put this out together somewhere and you're just ruining it. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to get in a soapbox here. But I just never understood it, the whole point of that. Now, now I would say if you're over in Europe, um you can probably let it go over there and it will probably survive. It'll definitely survive significantly more than it would here in the U S Yeah, it doesn't last very long in the States. If it's cool, forget about it. It's gone. You know, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, geo tour, geo tour hosts, geo tour hosts highlight the best of the best from the destination where they basically are, where their destination. Um, you see geo tours like West Bend's got one. I'm, that, that's just the closest one I know of, um, where it takes you all around West Bend. It's a, it's a pretty nice geo tour. So when you hear that, you know it's a touring. It's a ge, it's geocaches touring the area where you are. GPS global positioning system satellites work together with a GPS receiver to determine your exact location on Earth. See also GPSR. I'm going to go okay. ahead and do this one. Go ahead that one. Yeah, GPSR is a GPS receiver with the device used to determine your location using satellites. You know, the thing that you put in your, hold in your hand or, or is built into your smartphone. Right. That's a GPS R, not a GPS. Most people call I call it a GPS. We all, all. Yeah, we all everyone. say, let me get my GPS. <laughs> right. We're right. not carrying around a huge satellite. Right. So uh, the GPS is the actual satellites that work up in the uh, sky is what that is. How this game, this wonderful game works. Uh, GZ, another big one. GZ, Ground Zero. LPC. Cash is what that is. Actually. Yeah. LPC, Sonny's favorite cash type, the lamppost <laughs> cash. The lamppost go the, the L. You know, when I first started, I, I'd always see LPC in the hint, and I was like, what the hell does that mean? I'm trying to figure oh, out. Oh, what what's that. bad is when you start recognizing the um, undecoded hints in, <laughs> in there. <laughs> you could tell, yeah, what it is. You could tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, yes, the dreaded LPC. Um, here we go. Muggle, a term borrowed from J.K. Rowling books or stole about Harry Potter. Uh, who, uh, who do you know? Who came up with Muggle? I bet you Ian knows. Who came up with Muggle to, to decide like it's Muggle? Uh, anyway, a person who is not aware of geocaching or what it is. Geocachers try to avoid Muggles as the hiding place of a cache might otherwise be at risk of being exposed and, in the worst case, destroyed. So in essence, a muggle is just someone who does not cash. Uh, yep. His wife is a muggle. You know, my kid is a muggle. You know, uh, they do not cash. So, pocket query or PQ or PQ. Sorry, I didn't write PQ in there. Sorry, or PQ. Yeah. The opportunity to sort caches and download the coordinates of many caches at once within a specific area. For example, a city. This is only available to paying members and great when we want to load many caches to a GPS. So pocket queries usually get downloaded in what's called a GP, in GPX format, but they can also be downloaded into other formats as well. That's right. Uh, usually you do use pocket queries a lot if you have a GPS or um, if you want to work offline. Jesse, don't you do that a lot when we go somewhere and you want offline maps? Don't you usually pull a pocket query? Um, yes, that's one way that I could do it. I also create lists using, um, project GC and I also, you create lists just using a bookmark feature. But the, yeah. go, go ahead. Jack. I'm still almost completely pocket query. So my, my, I, I will pull the same, uh, all the data into GSAC and then push the, pull the GPX into both my GPS unit and my cell phone that way I've, even with in my cell phone i've got all the data offline yeah i don't i used to use pqs a lot uh, when i had when i used the gps a lot 
now I don't I rarely pull a PQ just because rarely do I not have signal. You know, I don't uh, I don't run across too many places where I don't have signal for very long anyway. So I don't know. I, just, well, I haven't done it in years. Yeah, you, you're well, I would say in Illinois, you're probably pretty good at that. Where I go to places in the mountainous areas around here, I get into dead zones. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's occasion pretty, pretty quickly. Nothing, nothing horrible. You know, nothing that what doesn't last more than five minutes. You know, eventually uh, you'll you'll hit another tower. You know, uh, power trail, Chad. A large mm-hmm. number of caches placed in a row slash on a trail, meant to be followed in order, with the purpose of logging many caches in a short period of time. Uh, this is uh, example is the ET Highway is a perfect example of a power trail. If you've ever heard of the ET Highway, that's like you know was it three thousand caches along one long road. You know, well, um, multiple three, roads, but yeah, 528 feet. You know, there's a cache. Uh, you'll see power trails a lot. Um, if you go more into the into the uh, less urban areas out in more little the boonies, you'll cut you start to see power. Trails. Yeah, you pull up the you pull up the um, geocaching ma- ma- uh, map and you'll just look for long strings along the road and you'll see a power trail. Oh, yeah, you'll see. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Reviewer. So a volunteer who checks and approves new caches online prior to publishing them. They also archive caches. Yes, they do. <laughs> and yeah, they, they tell do. you no. And give you a hard time when you try and post one. Yes. Uh SL. Simple. Sign log. It's something you'll see in a in a in a log. SL. Sign log. Swag. Stuff we all get. A slang term for tradable items left in geocaches. Often the swag consists of cheap plastic items, but it can also be a matter of more valuable objects. I've, I've heard of cameras, GPS units, uh, $100 bills, uh, and stuff being put in a swag for like uh, in, uh, for FTF prizes. I want a digital camera. I got a digital camera out of one cache yeah. years, uh, years ago. I think the most valuable item I got was a two dollar bill. You're like, no, I've gotten a five before. No, no, I, I actually, I've got, I've got a uh, unactivated uh, a geocoin, which is roughly seven to fifteen dollar range. Sure, sure. Uh, Cody Dog here adds one. He didn't call in now. Uh, booger, Chad. Let's see if you do this. A green okay. electrical box. Do you call those boogers? I, I have heard of the term before, but uh, nobody locally and, and none of the cashers that I've cashed with uh, use that term. So, but I have heard of it. You prayed a booger. All right, so it's not yeah. like uh, huh. it's not like completely non-existent, but uh, I don't think it's very common. Okay. Uh, moving along, TBO is the travel bug owner. The TBO. So temporary disable to temporarily close a cache. This can be done by the cache owner uh, when the cache is damaged and they need to repair it or if it's disappeared for some reason. Um, and uh, But also can be done by the reviewer. Uh, the cache is reactivated when the problem has been fixed. And if it doesn't get fixed in time and the uh reviewer isn't uh happy with the response time it may even get archived it may even get archived absolutely yeah Ten- temporary disabled uh tftc you see that written in a lot of logs if you don't know what that means that means thanks for the cash a short and simple thank you message often written online when logging a cache that's what it is tftc and please do not use those if the cash is really good please don't just put a tftc <laughs> on, on there why not Show a little bit of, of appreciation for the cash quality. Uh, TFTH, thanks for the hunt. Thanks for the hunt. I've never seen TH. I, I've seen TFTC. I've never seen TFTH. Oh, I have. Have you? Yeah. Oh, never. Right, go ahead, Chad. Do the one more, too. Uh, TFT dollar sign. Which means thanks for the cash. I've never seen that one either, Jesse. I've never seen that one. No. Oh sure, I've seen that too. You've seen that too? Yeah, with the dollar sign. I never paid. Oh mm-hmm. no, I've never yeah, seen. Yeah, TFT dollar sign is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry, Jess. Go ahead. No, I'm answering someone's question in the chat room. I'm going to send a link okay. here. Uh, TN 
ln took nothing left nothing written to indicate that when finding the cache the geocache took nothing out of it and put nothing in the cache now you could also have the long one the s l t n l n i used to do that when i was a newbie and, uh, and i've newbie. seen people do that on net micros and it's like why it's like <laughs> <laughs> obviously there's nothing in there but the log anyway sorry <laughs> uh travel bug or tb tb a tag attached to an object uh, the tag has a unique code allowing it to be tracked online when a cache removes a travel bug she register she or he registers this on the website uh the object can be a toy something personal or anything suitable to fit in a cache See also geocoin. Yes. So these are a lot less expensive than a geocoin, and usually you put something on there that isn't going to be stolen. Uh, <laughs> I've learned that lesson many a times. <laughs> or if you, or if it is desirable, drill a hole through it. <laughs> Again, I have, I don't understand why people keep. I just don't get it, man. I just, I just, I just don't get it. I don't know. And, and if you, and if you want it to you want it to stay going forever, drop it off in Europe. Yeah, because <laughs> it'll just it'll just circle and circle and circle. Is that what you're saying, Chad? Yes. All right, fair enough. Uh, a watch list, Jess. Can you mute yourself? Uh, watch list, Chad. A list of geocaches, travel bugs, or geocoins for which you receive an email whenever they are logged. They are on your air quote watch list. The purpose is to follow their development. As the owner of a cache, a TB, or a coin, you are already registered to receive those emails without having to add them to your watch list manually. So basically, you want if you want to see when a cache that is not yours gets hit, you put you add it to a watch list, and whenever that cache gets hit, which meaning which I mean gets actually logged, you will get the email also saying so you can see who logged it. It's basically what a watch list is. Yeah, I haven't got any emails recently on uh, yours and Jesse's uh, travel bugs. No, Jesse, what's up with Jesse keeps track of those? What's going on with travel bugs? So the, um, mine is uh -oh. traveling from cash to cash right now in California. Oh, um, it's there. Yep, and and Scott's is still sitting in a travel bug hotel in Minnesota. Oh, come on. Seriously? Come on. I got listeners in Minnesota. <laughs> Seriously, guys, go get this thing. We just, do you know where it is? Um, yeah, actually, so if you subscribe to our email list, um, I do update our, our, our website. people. Uh, yeah, the what's the word I'm looking for? Subscribers? Yes, I, I update our subscribers every week on the, uh, the front porch cache as well as the travel bugs and where they are. And I have maps so you can see where they've been. And... Just to see how how much suckage I, I, mine currently has gone nowhere. Yep. Is that what you're telling me? That's correct. Mine, mine's been sitting in Minnesota for a while now. Yep. Come on, man. Somebody's in Minnesota. Go get it. Jesse, what cash is it in? Do you know? It's in a, it's in a hotel. It is. Um, give me Isn't a second it? and I'll find it. Yeah. But she had hers is there. Hers is just bouncing around California. Yeah, I think it was uh, last I saw. I think it was in Southern California. Was it? That's way so, closer to me. I'm like, I couldn't be for the only way I get further is if I if I freaking move east. I'm in like I'm in Minnesota. Yeah, I've got, I've got them both on my watch list. So, all right, here you go. It's in the Hideout Hotel. What's the um, GC on there? GC three eight two six C. Okay, somebody go get it. Move it. Move it west. West. <laughs> yes. Um. There you go, guys. That's the list. That's all I got here in terms of the list here uh, of uh, of uh, phrases and terms. I think we hit most of the ones, most of the basics, Chad. Yep. Uh, looking in the chat room, did we miss anything? Um, I'm not seeing anything that anybody uh, added to it in the chat room. I think we got most of them. Jim says it's frozen. What's frozen? The cash in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Could yeah. very well it's be. Malcolm was going to pick it up and move it to Maine. I know, right? That's what's going to happen, literally. Yeah, I know. Got to move it west. It needs to go west. To, in the lovely downtown North Mankato. Or Cato? More, more than Cato. I'm going to have to go get it myself. We got to go get that partnership cash and go get it, Jess. Yeah, go get it. I can't hear you. You're a... Road trip. Let's go. Road trip. <laughs> to Minnesota. That's a, that's a six-hour road trip, isn't it? 
Actually, I have an idea for a road trip for this weekend. I'll, I'll this share weekend? that with you later. Maybe. Where do you want to go? No, sure. we got time here. Show it to the other world. Well, I was thinking about working on some counties in Indiana now that we have Illinois finished. Oh, God. You're kidding. What about Wisconsin? I thought we were going to do Wisconsin next. Yeah, but it, I, I have a path through Indiana that we could do easily in a day. A path through? So not an overnight trip, just a day trip. Yeah, we could do a day trip. Is it snowing in Indiana? Probably. It's snowing I'm here. Saying, I'm, I'm, no, my curiosity being like like being able to travel. Like right now it's snowing. Oh, a good one. Hold on. You at UPS, a, a usual pile of sticks or unusual pile of sticks. That's a good one. Good gun, Glenn. Yeah, a, a UPS. Good one. I like that one. That's also one. Thank you. Uh, GS sometimes too, Jesse, wants to know where your cash is. It's in where his neck of the woods. It's in yeah, it's... Oh, GSM. It's in yours. Where is it? So it's in it... the Giving Tree, which is GC five R B C E. Well, so, that was the that was the last time it was visited. It's actually or the last time it's visited. Oh, yeah, it, the hands of it's, yeah, it's actually it being held on to by. I'm totally gonna. It's a. I think it maybe is love but to <laughs> love to ride mx maybe lv2 rid mx or love to ride. love to ride Ma ride. max i don't know i don't know somebody knows him who listens to this show i pretty much guarantee it yeah he's gonna drop that so somebody else can get it ian says do ohio next see ian the problem with ohio is that like it's it's not it's like another state over it's not like it's kind of far so yeah, phone a friend. How did we forget PAF? Oh, oh yes. God. How did I skip that one? Oh, man. See, guys, I can't hit them all. PAF, phone a friend. That's a real good one as well. Thank you. MX is motocross, Jesse. Oh, yes. I love to ride motocross. There you go. <laughs> he can, anybody know who's he or she? I'm not judging. Who they are. Uh, I don't know. To drop Jesse's uh, travel bug. Because so they're there. in your area. We got two cash hides. Let me find out where those cash hides are. Mm -hmm. That might be a good indication of where in general they are. Yeah, so what, do we, what, what do we get? Who wins? What do we get? Is it uh, a, bragging is it, rights? Is it strict, strict bragging rights? Is that Absolutely. Right. Do we get Chad first? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, they're, 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 one hide is uh, north of the... Of the San Bernardino uh, mountain areas. San so, Bernardino. Nice. Kind of just, I would say, maybe 40 miles east of Victorville. Okay. <laughs> we're we're stalking a cacher. Nice. <laughs> Live on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My apologies. That's when it's time to go. So, uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, next week, Chad, mm -hmm. we continue with the newbie month. You have to woke everybody up right there. You're welcome, guys. Uh, Chad, next show, how to write a great log. It doesn't start with TFTC. How, <laughs> how to write. <laughs> Wait, how about this? Here you go, Jess. If Jesse wins, Scott has to answer the phones. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> I'll answer the phones. I have no problem. I'll let Jesse run the show. Go ahead. Take it over. Trust me. Good luck. It's not as easy as I make it seem, guys. I promise. Uh, guys, how to write a great log is what's coming next week, Chad, continuing on our newbie month series. Mm -hmm. And Jesse, just for the record, uh, this, this actually made Jesse laugh. Jesse, who did the newbie month? Uh, what, uh, bra, what, what vlogger did that? It, ma it made you laugh. Who was it? Do you remember who it was? Was it Cash Line or was it Cash Canada? Who did it? You're totally, you're, you're turned off, Jay. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, I'm trying to remember who it was. I don't know, but I think we should, like, make it a, a thing. I know. Somebody, so somebody must have been watching our show, Chad, and they literally thought it was Newbie Month for geocaching, which... That's just a made-up thing that we did for everybody. <laughs> but uh, they're like, they they played it, and God bless them, man. They kept it going. Hey, man, keep it going, man. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, new February, make February newbie month, man. Absolutely. Ground speak, newbie month. I'll call, uh, 
I'll shoot an email to what's his name? To Brian. Brian. See what he thinks about that. Make a newbie mind. So, Chad, how to write a great log. We're going to learn about mm-hmm. different ways to write a great log, Chad. Uh-huh. Lord knows I need help because I just do a copy and paste, which I've yeah. been doing for years. Jesse, do you write good log? Um, I have a, um, uh, what's the word? I have a template set up, and I use that template unless there's something special that you know I feel I need to say more. Okay, Chad, what about you? Um, I've written some very excellent logs, and I've written, I've written some. Eh, if, if, if the cache isn't isn't really special, then um, the token. It, it's usually a couple liner, but uh, but it's still more than a TFTC. Um, now, we might get into uh, talking about logging a liar cache. Oh, a liar oh. caches, yes. Guys, I expect, I expect many phone calls next week because this is a good one. How to write a great log. Everybody has, has a, I'm sure Ian's going to call in, because everybody has a, uh, has a comment and their own opinion on what makes a great log. And we're going to talk all about it next week, guys. So, Jesse, thank you so much. Chad, thank you so much. Guys, chat room, as always, thank you guys so much for uh, for chiming in. Everybody who called tonight, thank you guys so much. You guys, you guys are all going to get a prize. We appreciate it very much. From our friends at Practical Geocaching. Um, and we thank you so much. Chad, next week, how to write a great log, kid. Mm-hmm. Rounding out February. We're almost done with February. And Chad, you know what that means when we're done with February? Uh, we, got, we got March coming. March, that's spring. That means spring. March. Coming. March Madness. Spring's coming soon, Chad. I, I get a new uh, a new phone. You get a new phone come March. Yeah, my mine's dying. Are you gonna get an iPhone, Chad? Hell no. Come on, get an iPhone, Chad. I'm getting a Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. <laughs> of course you are, <laughs> Jesse. I've been shaking her head. <laughs> she had an eye roll no. and a head shake. <laughs> no, I was shaking my head at the fact that they're up to twenty. <laughs> I well, had like I had they, like an S three. They, they would have been a, eleven, but uh, I think since the the decade turned over, they said, "Hey, let's hop to 20. So it's going to be with the numbers of the year. Oh, yeah. okay, all yeah. right, all right, fair enough. Yeah, sometimes two says baseball is coming. That's right, baseball is coming. That makes baseball has fun. technically started. Well, yeah, pitchers and catchers. Yeah, yes. And the good news is that like I don't have to coach this year, so like uh, we shouldn't have too much. I hope. Oh, I forgot about Shane and all. Now that uh, Shane may travel baseball, hope there's no Wednesday games. Hope not. I'm gonna deal with those again. Ugh. Anyway, guys, S- send them with some other parent. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Next week, how to write a great log. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you so much, guys, for listening in and paying attention. And let's end this show. Please join us again every Wednesday night, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. So we stream live on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and on our website, geocachingpodcast.com. The archived video versions are available on our podcast or, and available on our website or on our YouTube channel. And the audio versions are available on your favorite podcaster. If you like the show, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and rate, review, and subscribe. We really appreciate it, and it really helps the show when you do. If you prefer to watch the show, please be sure to click on the subscribe or get notified buttons to know when we go live. Hey, if you haven't already, please consider becoming a patron of our show. With tiers starting as low as three dollars, you will get a ton of diff- a di- ton of additional information, extra videos, extra audio, only available to our patron members. Just head on over to patreon.com today and subscribe. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash the geocaching podcast. Thanks once again to our sponsors, Cashly, Logwork, FTF Geocaching Magazine, the Max Huts Body Company, Practical Geocaching, and PathTags.com. Please visit our sponsors, and when you make a purchase, you tell them the GCPC sent you. That's all we got this week, so we'll see you next week talking geocaching, taking your phone calls. In the meantime, be good, be safe, hug your loved ones, and we'll talk to you guys next week. We are clear, Chad. Mm -hmm. We are clear. So get this, Chad. You'll appreciate this. So I got an email from uh, from YouTube, right? Okay. Um, they want to, they are auditing our API. Ours, the show, not me and Jess. Okay. So I have to give them, because I use an API. Do you know what an API is? 
I'm assuming you did. Yeah. Okay. So the API that I use for for Google is for our for our website. You know, when you go to geocachingpodcast.com mm-hmm. slash live and you see us there, mm-hmm. you know, well, I have set up an API so I don't have to go in there and change the uh, the code every week. It automatically generates the code and automatically puts it on the show. And that's why it makes it also makes it responsive and it makes it really nice. And what he was never used that on our website. It's really freaking cool. Um, and so they are, they audited us because, you know, the whole kid thing, you know, uh, the whole kids and YouTube thing. So they audited me or us and they're like, you know, you, I, I spent hours sending him documentation and sending him screenshots and sending him ways how it works. And they're like, not enough. I'm like, Dude, what, more what? Do you, what more do you want? They're like, you need to explain to us exactly how it works. I'm like, I didn't build it. I don't know exactly it works. <laughs> <laughs> I put the code on the site. The code shows up on the site. That's right. How it works. Like, you want me to explain it? I don't know. I, I'm, you know, I'm not a back end guy. I don't know how it works. And then they literally showed me a screenshot of like, well, you have a username and password because here, this is the login. I look at the login, dude. It's the login for the company website to log into their WordPress. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm like, dude. That's their WordPress login. What are you talking about? Like it said, like, you know, username and password, like to log into the back end of their site. Like they sent me like they, they they basically called me a liar because it showed that it had a username and password. I'm like, dude, that's not even mine. That's theirs. Look at the address. <laughs> it says WP admin, which is like the admin site for the back end of a WordPress site. All right. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, this is the back end stuff I deal with that you have no idea. <laughs> uh, sorry to hear no that. No idea, man. Oh. Yeah, this is I'm dealing with YouTube and the whole kid thing. Yeah, the whole kid crazy because, you know, parents can't police their children kind of deal. Jesse. So what are they, what are they expecting the kids to be doing I, that is causing havoc with? I, I think it's California. It's, it's you crazy people. <laughs> you guys are screwing up the whole e-com system. You screwed uh, it all up. Yes, you did. It's Cal bullshit. It's all California. Scott. Prop 65, kids. Sorry. I said, well, we're offline. It's Prop 65. <laughs> it's all California, kid. <coughs> yeah. You're messing with my whole my whole work. It's going crazy because of you guys. I ain't. I work for an e-commerce company there. They hate you. Hate your state. Hate you. you. Know how much work I had to do because of Prop 65? You have no idea. Between I, you guys I, and with Maryland, to be honest, I don't even know what the hell Prop 65 is. It's um, it's a privacy law. Know. It's a California privacy law that states so like um, so for example, like anything we ship to California has to say like this could kill you, or like like you guys have so many like you're, between your privacy and like okay. your full full disclosure laws. You guys like re up this crazy thing, and then you got uh, is it Maryland or some East Coast state who decided that like. Everybody should pay income tax on the web. So now everybody has to pay income tax on the web. You know, like that's going crazy now too. Yeah, I don't know. When you work for an e-commerce company, it's kind of a nightmare. Well, then the EU must really drive you nuts. I don't deal with the EU, so it doesn't. No, no, I don't. My, we don't ship. Uh, we don't. We don't. We don't ship out of a uh, of country. So it's okay. We're 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 local only. Uh, all right. Sorry, that was on live. That was actually live. Uh, all right, <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Chad, stay on line because I need to talk to you. All right, um, guys, thank you so much. We will uh, talk to you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And uh, 